Hello everyone, DM Geezer Jim here for another one of our monster shorts. Today we're going to take a look at the Atiug and the Neo Atiug, primarily the Neo Atiug. First, thanks for joining me for this series. Uh, just quick little 10-15 minute video about some of these uh, some of these critters. You know, some of them are commonly known, some of them may not be known to you. Uh, just trying to provide some information, some insight, and some tips to use these things uh, in, in your adventures and campaigns. So let's jump into it. Uh, this ugly thing on my page right now is the image from the 5th edition uh, monster manual for the Neo Atiyug. Okay, an aberrational creature, um, the ultimate in walking, tra walking garbage disposals. As a matter of fact, uh, this creature is a three-legged, three-tentacled, eyes up on the top stalk. What you see is what you get. Kind of gross, kind of freaky. Um, so the first thing, that's the first thing we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about three things to learn about with the Atiugs. Uh, the first thing is its environment, its ecology. It's a trash feeder, it's a carrion feeder, it's a dung feeder. So when these things are in play, they, they're they not wandering monsters that hunt hunt wild creatures through the woods. Typically, they don't even, you know, stalk things in the dungeon. They're not, they're, they're not hunting creatures. They're going to be sedentary opportunity feeders. So understanding the ecology is understanding where to use them, okay? Uh, pr pretty quick, you know, it's pretty simple. This is not something you're going to have wandering through the woods uh, in a random encounter table. This is not something that's going to be a dungeon uh, cleaning type thing. That's left for the giant lotness cube. This is the big nasty beast that sits in the cave at the front of the goblin complex that they fill up all of the refuse, all of the offal, all of the trash, all of the poop, all of the yuck, throw it into this big pit. And this gigantic creature, this huge creature, I should say, lives in here feeding on this junk happily and then grabbing fresh meat whenever it's short on other food, okay? It's an opportunity feeder. It's not a hunter. So that's first thing to remember with its, with its ecology, the, the where it lives, how it functions. Uh, real quick, let's get in the second thing, and we're going to talk about um, how to use it, uh, positioning it. Well, let's go number two. Let's go with abilities. Let's talk about its abilities in, in relation to fifth edition stats. So then we can lead into number three, which would be tactical application of this big old chunk and nasty thing, right? Uh, the Neo Atiug and the Atiug are uh, related. The Neo is the bigger, the, the smarter of the two. So that's what we're going to focus on. They're interchangeable. Number one, nothing. the Atiug is a little bit softer, doesn't have the spell casting abilities of the Neo. Other than that, everything else is going to be the same. Keep that in mind. Uh, so stat wise, number two, what's this thing look like in combat? How does this thing, you know, what are its abilities? Uh, so we've got an armor class of 16, hit points of 150 as an average, which would be about 220 hit point maximum. Uh, walking speed of 30, no climb, no flight, no dig, just a stompy walking. Um, no resistances. It is immune to poison. Uh, that's, that's, you know, it, that's its only defensive thing. No magic resistance, no nothing like that. So it's going to be a big old chonky hit point blob. Um, your party shouldn't have too many issues dealing damage to it. It does have a limited telepathy ability. Uh, now keep in mind, DMs, this is not limited by sight, but by range. It can magically transmit simple messages and images to a creature within 120 feet of it that can understand a language. So the creature can telepathically briefly communicate with anything that it can sense within 120 feet of it that it can understand a language. You can't talk back to it, but it can talk into your mind. The Neo Atiug has innate spellcasting, psionic abilities similar to your mind flayers. They're not magic abilities. They're innate spellcasting. These don't require components. They don't require anything uh, that, you know, silence, etc. doesn't affect them. It can detect thoughts at will, which is a little bit of, you know, you can have some fun with that. But uh, the other thing is uh, command and hold person. The creature has the ability to uh, cast the command spell and the hold person spell once per day each, okay? Its main threats is its physical attacks, and even those aren't big. This is a nutritional style combat monster. It's not a, a it's not a party ender. It's not a TPKer. It's just something to to drain some resources out of your party. Think this is the guy that that prompts the short rest after combat, okay? The first thing we're looking at is uh, its multi attacks. It's got three attacks: uh, one with its bite, two with its tentacles, and then tentacle slam is a special ability. The bite attack, plus 8 to hit, a little bit low for its combat rating. Remember, CR7 means it's about 5th to 8th level party. 5th level party is going to be a challenge. 8th level party it would be a moderate to easy encounter. They're not social creatures, so very, you're never going to run into more than one of these guys. Okay. 
but uh, the bite attack is 2d6 plus 2d10 plus 5, 16 average damage. Not a bunch of damage for level 5, uh, for level uh, 7 or 8 party. <clears throat> but the DC 10, 17 constitution saving throw uh, to save against the disease. The disease is the attritional part of it. First and foremost, if you fail your save, if your player fails their save, they're suffering from the poison condition. Disadvantage in attack rolls and ability checks as long as they're poisoned. Um, now, this is until the disease is cured. Now, every 24 hours that elapse, the target must repeat the saving throw, reducing his hit points by uh, 1d10 on a failure. The disease is cured on a success or cured with a, a spell that will do it, you know, lesser restoration, things like that. Now, if the disease goes on long enough to reduce the target to zero hit points, the target dies. The hit point reduction is also the reduction in the target's maximum until the disease is cured. So that's what I mean by attritional. It's not going to end a campaign. It's just going to cause an extra spell slot to be used. It's going to cause an extra rest period to be used. It's going to cost the party some sort of resource to deal with a, a party member getting this disease. If they can't deal with the disease, then you have a weakened party member as the party goes forward. Uh, the second thing it's going to have is its tentacle attacks. Plus 8 to hit, reach for 15 foot. 1d10 plus 5, average of 10 damage, bludgeoning damage. This is where it's special though. If the target is hit, it is grappled and restrained until the grapple ends, okay? Which means your party actually has to use their action to escape. It's not a countered grapple. As part of the hit, um, hit 1d10 plus 5 bludgeoning damage. If the target is larger or smaller, it is grappled and restrained until the grapple ends. The neo twig has two tentacles, so it's not attempting to grapple. It's an automatic, if hit, then grappled, if then statement. So your party, when it hits your party, it's able to restrain them. Again, resource management. Do I fight restrained or I'd use my action to escape the grapple? That's the choice that you're pushing your party into with this tactic. And the third thing, uh, it's his ability. The third ability it has is tentacle slam ability. The neo oitug slams creatures, Atiug slams creatures grappled by it into each other or a solid surface. Each creature must succeed on a DC con 16 con save or take 3d6 plus 5 bludgeoning damage and be stunned. If they make their save, they're not stunned uh, and they only take half the bludgeoning damage. Okay. As long as they're not escaping the target, you continue to slam them. Okay. Which leads us to, uh, to tip number three. Tactics for, the, for using this guy in combat. First, we talked about its environment, its ecology. It's not a hunter. It's not a wanderer. It's not a social creature. So it's going to be living in an area that has easy access to the food it prefers. And it's going to be living there alone. Okay. Secondly, we talked about its abilities. It's got uh, tele limited, tele uh, limited telepathy, a couple minor crowd control command, hold person spells, and then some decent physical abilities. Nothing game breaking. Nothing that's going to absolutely destroy a party at CR7. So again, I, I want to emphasize, I don't necessarily think of this as a deadly encounter. As a matter of fact, a neo Atiug or an Atiug is an easy encounter unless you focus on number three. Setting the thing up for success. How to use it tactically. Okay. First thing to remember, it's huge. It's a large creature. By 5th edition rules, it's going to be a 15 foot, uh, a 3 foot by three, a three square by 3 square base. For your VTTs, 15 foot by 15 foot area is what it's going to be, uh, going to occupy. Large creature, which a huge creature actually, which incidentally means if you're putting it in a small tunnel complex, you're not allowing the Atiug uh, to move. Now, let's be honest. If you put it in a pit full of all kinds of junk and the goblins or the kobolds or whoever have been feeding this thing for years and years and years, it could definitely grow to be larger than it should be in this space. That's a story building and a tactical decision you need to make when you uh, set her up. But remember, the Atiug is a large creature. It's not a mobile creature. It doesn't have uh, climbing or burrowing speed. It's going to have to walk through the tunnels the same way everyone else does. Okay? Don't restrict it to a small space. If you put it in a small space, it doesn't have any mobility at all, and your party can just run around it in circles and, and kite it, for lack of a better term. Okay, so make sure that the party can't just kite this thing down a narrow tunnel where the Atiug can't reach them. Okay, now one thing it does have working for its advantage is reach. It's got a 15 foot reach on its tentacle attacks and a 10 foot reach on its bite attacks. So Dungeon Masters, when you're setting the sucker up in combat, make sure to give the ugly dude some advantages. Make sure to give them the opportunity. Again, remember, it doesn't have a ton of resistances. It doesn't have a high armor class. It's got a lot of hit points. 
It's a creature that's designed for your party just to go ham on, do lots of damage, take it out, kill it, and go on with their day. Okay? So setting it up uh, tactically to give it an advantage to, to make it live a little longer. That's all we're talking about doing. Make sure that its space is large enough for a huge creature, 15 foot by 15 foot creature, to move around a little bit if it needs to. Alternately, if you want to use a smaller area, give it verticality. Um, let it sit at a higher ledge or a lower pit where your party can't even detect it. Maybe it's immersed in the garbage. The only thing sticking out of it is that one, the, the top little, this ooky ass tentacle that you see on top here. Um, that's the only thing protruding from this pile of garbage and filth and manure and body parts is that tentacle. So now we give it a surprise chance. Opportunity to execute a surprise attack to do its grabs. Make sure, even though we're talking about a big area to, to um, you know, accommodate the size of the creature, don't make it so big where it can't slam your party into targets. And if you do put it in a big ass room, remember you can slam it into the floor. Its number one damage output is not its bite. It's not its tentacle slaps. It's the tentacle slam ability. The ability to take someone, slam him into the floor, the wall, or another player and do 3d6 plus 5 damage. Okay? Now, if you slam the two of them together, one in each tentacle, they both have to make the save. If you just slam it against another person, you probably have to agitate a little bit to make some, give them the opportunity to dodge it, in which case the dude slams into the floor, still takes the damage. So last but not, not least, with setting up our Artyug uh, to give it the best chance for success, be mindful of the size of its lair. Be mindful of the space that you give it. Make sure that if you're playing with verticality that you're not putting it in a position where they stand 25 feet above it and shoot it, okay? Or 30 feet below it and shoot it, okay? Make sure that you're setting this creature in the place where it has at least an initial advantage with its reach. And then it has the space to move to continue maintaining that reach advantage. Do not put this sucker in a, in a cul-de-sac cave with a 50-foot hallway that leads into it. Your party is going to retreat 40 feet away and fill it with arrows and spells before it can get close enough to him to do anything. Much less if it's a narrow hallway, the dude's got to squeeze through, which makes it difficult terrain. So we've taken this big chunky bastard and slowed its movement speed down to 15. So yeah, last but not least, when you're playing with an Atyug, a Neo Atyug, or, or any big creatures, make sure that you're mindful of the space that you're putting the encounter in to where you're not restricting the movement or the ability of the creature. Uh, conversely, if you're trying to make it easier, yeah, put the son of a bitch in a closet, uh, let the party have a 100-foot-long hallway to shoot at it, and it's an easy fight. But yeah, how you stage this is going to be the single largest determining factor in the challenge of the Atyugs, okay? But hey, that's it, guys. Uh, real quick, three little things on our buddy. Remember, number one, remember it's ecology. It's a carrion feeder. It's a dung feeder. It's an offal feeder. It's not gonna. It's not a wanderer. It's not a hunter. It's going to stay in its lair, and its lair needs to be able to feed it. Number two, remember its abilities. Not very potent. Not a lot of re resistances. Lots of hit points. Kind of a tanky, chonky brother. Uh, number three, remember if you don't set it up for success by placing it in an environment that allows its mobility and allows its reach to come into play then you're just putting 150 hit points there for your party to roll against. Three rounds later, say, yeah, we win, and it goes from being an interesting fight to a very boring fight. So number three, above all else, make sure that you're giving the Atiugs space to be themselves. But hey, thank you guys so much for joining me. DM Geezer Jim here doing another Monster Short. We're just talking, you know, picking out random, random creatures, throwing them up there. I'd love to hear back from you. Um, Obviously, likes, follows, subscribes, all that kind of cool shit's really good. Uh, share with your friends if you want to. But, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know if there's a creature that you want to see something about. Let me know if you have questions about the stuff I'm talking about. Uh, you know, give me some feedback so, so we can, you know, do a better job. Maybe talk about monsters you guys want to talk about. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much for sharing your time with me. Um, over on Twitch five days a week, Monday to Friday, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Would love to chat about this stuff live with you then as well. Uh, you can hit uh, the About on this page, on my YouTube page. Follow us over on Patreon. Uh, help support our projects as we go. But above all else, thank you, thank you for your time. Hopefully you learned something about our chonky brother, the Neo Atiug, and, and find yourself another resource to, to keep your party busy in a dungeon. Y'all be safe.